What's up guys? So this is the video you guys have been waiting for. This is the Mac Pro challenge. So if you're looking to buy a Mac Pro, you are definitely going to want to watch this whole entire video. This is where I take my custom built PC and put it up against Marquez Brownlee or better known as MKBHD's 8 core Mac Pro. But I'm also going to throw in TLD today's 6 core Mac Pro so you guys can see how all of these computers stack up. So if you're, looking, if you're looking to buy a 6 core Mac Pro, if you're looking to buy an 8 core Mac Pro, which one's better? Is the 6 core better than the 8 core? How are they better? Or most importantly, should you forget about those two setups and just go straight to the PC? So I'm gonna go over some benchmarks and if you're just tuning in and you don't know what's going on, I will leave a couple of dis or links down below down in the description to give you a better idea of my setup and the whole entire challenge. So without further ado, let's get started. So before I begin, a couple of things that I want to talk about is we're going to go over some benchmarks. Most importantly, I'm going to show you what my computer did. Then I'm going to give you guys the nice clean charts to give you a comparison between all computers. And then of course, my final thoughts. So let's go ahead and begin with our first benchmark. So the very first benchmark we're going to run is called Geekbench, which is a very popular application on the Mac side. Now this is 64-bit Geekbench, and this is going to take a single core score and also a multi-core score and basically the single core score is things that you do every day like for example visit websites listen to music and even gaming so obviously the single core score is day-to-day -day stuff and the multi-core is more like 3d rendering if you're doing video applications so on the geekbench side my single core score was 3959 and my multi-core score was 23 1887 which is very impressive moving on to Cinebench another popular application this is Cinebench R15 now for my CPU side I scored a 1196 now something to note here which was very interesting to me is when we did the GPU which is an OpenGL test which uses the graphics card not the CPU side uh, one thing that I noticed is that my graphics card number two was not running and I think this is a known problem because I believe on the Mac side, they were also having this issue. So only one graphics card was being used. But most importantly, what I found interesting was that when I was running this test, the duty cycle or the, you know, the GPU usage was under 50%. So basically what this tells me is that the graphics card was kicking back, just relaxing, hovering about 30 to 40% GPU usage, and it mustered up an, 100, an average of 111 frames per second. Granted, I was able to get sometimes even 113, 115, but what I did was I took the average and I'll leave it at 111 for one graphics card. Now this next test measures the speed of the hard drives. So this is Blackmagic's disk speed test. Now my read, megabytes per second, I was averaging about 959, and my write speeds were 843, which is very impressive. Now, something to note, the Mac Pro uses a PCIe SSD, and I am running two SSDs in RAID 0. Now our next test is the Luxmark 2.0 on Windows side and 2.1 on the Mac side. Now this is where the Mac should really shine because this is an open CL test. But something to note here is that on the Luxmark, on this particular test, for whatever reason, I couldn't get my CPU to do any of the work or help with the load. So here, this is only GPU performance, whereas Marquez and also uh, TLDs, their benchmark is CPU and GPU. So for what it's worth, just keep that in mind that this is only GPU, as you can see here, it's not computing or my CPU is not helping with anything. Uh, this score was 3,684, which is very impressive considering that no CPU was being used and only GPU. Now this next test is called Nova Bench and I only ran it because MKBHD ran it on his video and my score was 2,825. So this is an older benchmark like he said, but I just wanted to throw it out there just to kind of compare it if some of you guys are still running this benchmark. Now this next benchmark is called Unigen Valley 1.0 and this is probably more of a gaming type benchmark to give you more of a what your graphics card will really do in a you know gaming environment and I was very impressed with the results here of course using dual uh, GTX 780 Ti's I was able to muster an average of 114 frames per second. 
Now, last but not least, I know I talked about the price. The price of this build that I did was, when I initially talked to you guys about it, was about $5,000. Now, something to note, I did not use that PCIe SSD that I initially was going to use. Instead, I used two SSD and ran them in RAID 0, which actually cut the cost down. Uh, I believe it was like $4,600 and change for the actual build. And I'll leave a link down below to PC Part Picker so you guys can see all of the different components that I use, and that's including buying window, a copy of Windows 7, the $4,600 price. So that is something to consider how inexpensive this build was. So how did it compare to, you know, TLD setup? How did it compare to MKBHD's A-Core Mac Pro? Also, one, one more thing to consider is I ran all of these benchmarks in Windows 7. So if I would have ran them in Windows 8, and you guys already know this, Windows 8 would have given me a pretty significant a higher score. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these scores is that I'm using Windows 7, not Windows 8. And probably you guys are asking why I don't use Windows 8. I just prefer Windows 7 and I'm happy for that small sacrifice because the computer is already a beast. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scores combined and kind of give you my thoughts on that. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first benchmark comparing all of the computers together. This is Geekbench 3 64-bit. Now here's something interesting. If you're looking to buy a Mac Pro, between the six core and the eight core, you can see that on the single core side, there's really not much of a difference there. So if you're gonna be using, like I said, some web browsing, light applications, even gaming, I mean, your day-to-day -day stuff, nothing, you know, no 3D rendering or any video editing, the Mac Pro six core does as good of a job as an eight core. So of course you can argue, why would I buy a Mac Pro to do such a thing? But let's face it, this computer is gonna replace your current computer and you're most likely gonna do those type of things. Now on the PC side, this was a huge win with 3,959. So on a single core, the PC was doing a lot better. Now jumping onto the multi-core, this is where MKBHD did take the lead at 26,092 and of course, I would only expect it using that it is an eight core processor compared to my six core or even TLD's six core Mac Pro. Now, something to think about here is I have a six core, TLD has a six core. So even at six core and six core comparison, the PC side was better than the Mac Pro. So on my computer, it was kind of like in the middle between the six core and the eight core looking at the scores. Now, jumping on to Cinebench R, 15. You could see here that once again, I'm kind of right at the middle. Actually, I wouldn't really say, well, I guess you could say it is a middle ground. The uh, highest score was MKBHD at 1,223, but I wasn't too far behind at 1,196. As a matter of fact, you could say that I was basically trailing him. So in terms of CPU computation performance, now oh, that sounded weird. <laughs> it was uh, actually pretty close. Uh, 961, again, TLD wasn't too far behind. So again, something to consider when you're looking to buy a six core or eight core. The process or the difference here is not that much. So is the price really worth it? You gotta ask yourself that. Now, Cinebench R15 OpenGL. Now, as far as I know, all of these were only running one graphics card. Um, also, TLD's setup is running the D500s compared to MKBHD is running the D700. So there are there is a difference here when it comes to graphics cards. The uh, clear winner here was a PC, and I would say that is, again, something that I was telling you guys when I first was running the benchmark. The graphics card was just cruising, kicking back at 35, 40% utilization. So remember, that was just only one graphics card. So I don't know if it's just not optimized or if it's just giving it enough, but Something to consider at 111 FPS, the GPU was not even stressing. I don't know on the Mac side, but for what it's worth, it still beat it. MKBHD was in second at 86. Remember, he is running the better graphics uh, cards, the upgraded ones, compared to DL TLD's 76. Now let's go ahead and jump into disk speed test. Now here's an interesting one, because once again, I kind of fall right in the middle in between the eight core and six core. Um, Marquez, 990 on the reads and 890 on the writes. I was right in between TLDs at 959 where TLD had 915 on the reads and on the right side I was at 843 and TLD was at 803. And again, this is not a PCIe SSD. This is two SSD running in RAID 0. So either setup for what it's worth is whichever one, 6 core, 8 core Mac Pro or even the PC, it's ridiculously fast and you won't have any issues 
here. Now Luxmark, this is where I think the Mac Pro really should have shined and it sort of did. Remember, I was only doing GPU performance where the Mac Pro was doing CPU and GPU. So it, it did have an advantage there and it clearly showed with 4,376. But what's interesting to me is how far away the you know, TLD's uh, setup was or his score was at 3,194. And I think this has to do a lot with the GPUs. So I think there's, you could see a trend here. If you're looking to buy a Mac Pro, one of the things that I would definitely buy is, or upgrade is the GPUs. Cause you can see the difference when it comes to GPU performance. And you know, being that this is an open CL test, the GPUs were really going to be hard at work here too. Now, Nova Bench, as I said before, this is a test that Mark has ran and I just wanted to run it for fun. I scored a 2,825, he scored a 2,254, which there's no point in even having TLD. He didn't run this test, but it didn't really matter because I doubt that his would have been any higher than 2,254. So for what it's worth, that is a score for Nova Bench, an older benchmark if you guys are still using that as a proving grounds. Then we have Unigen Valley 1.0. So again, interesting enough, 29 versus 72. And I don't know why, I, I, from what I remember, and I believe Tech of Tomorrow, which borrowed TLD's computer saying that they were having problems getting the second GPU uh, recognized. And I don't know if MKBHD had that same problem because there's a big difference between 29 FPS to 72. Could that be the difference in graphics card between the 500 and the 700? Who knows? I don't know, maybe uh, Marquez Brownlee uh, can shine in on that or some, you know, somebody at TLD, that would be great. Uh, 114, so again, this is more of the gaming performance. The PC side is definitely gonna most likely always win this one. So that was to be expected here. Now, last but not least, we have price. Now, of course, lower is better. And here's where you see a huge difference and kind of put things in perspective of how much performance you're getting per dollar. Now, TLDs is 3,999, which is a basic base model six core setup compared to MKBHD's fully loaded eight core uh, setup, which runs at 8,099. Now that is without tax. One thing to note that MKBHD did get a student discount. So I'm putting the price that it would cost you if you were not a student to build. My price on my PC was 4,628.87. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that I did go a little bit overkill on a couple of components. And realistically, for example, on the CPU side, I could have gone with a 4930K, could have saved 600 bucks doing that. That would have put me right in line with TLD setup at $4,000. Also, TLD setup has a 256 gigabyte storage, whereas mine had three terabytes plus almost 500 gigs of SSD. So that's something to consider. You're basically looking at the PC side as the most inexpensive setup, but you're also getting probably the most performance per dollar. So as you guys can see, I was able to build a custom PC for literally half the price of an eight core Mac Pro and have it perform equally and in some cases even better than an eight core Mac Pro. Now I know you guys can argue or you, some of you will argue that the Mac Pro uses workstation grade components. But if you followed my build video, which I will leave that link down below, I talked about how I could have gone with ECC RAM, I could have gone with a Xeon processor, and, if, and it would have been a couple of hundred dollars more. So the price difference was really not going to be something crazy and the results would have probably been pretty close. So there you have it guys, something to think about. Now, my computer is more than capable, or even if you have a custom PC like myself, is more than capable of running professional grade software like Adobe Premiere or some of these, you know, 3D Studio Max, if you're into that, you know, 3D rendering type of stuff. As a matter of fact, to prove this, I went into the Mac forums, okay? And there was a guy there with a Quadro K6000, K6000 workstation GPU. This GPU is $5,000 alone. This is a workstation GPU. And to prove my theory on this, I went in there, there's this benchmark on After, After Effects that uses um, CUDA cores, okay? So you're basically using the CUDA cores on the GPU. It is a ray tracing benchmark. And I decimated, I killed, I mean, 
between my score and the Quadro, you know, K6000 was like night and day. I destroyed the K6000 score. As a matter of fact, I am number one right now. And I'll leave that link down below to that Mac forum thread if you guys want to go ahead and take a look at that. They're just to show you that a consumer grade gaming card can be hacked, which is what exactly what I did to take advantage of all of these things that some of these applications offer like CUDA cores and stuff like that. So yeah, you don't need a workstation. And this is something that, you know, I can create a whole different video about it. Workstation versus gaming cards, you know? So for what it's worth, this machine is more than capable of doing and running those applications. Now there is that X factor where the Mac Pro is, you know, a lot smaller form factor. Um, some of you might even argue that it's more quieter. Well. 90% of the time, my computer fans are completely shut off. This is something that my motherboard using software takes advantage. So if you walked into my room right now, you would not think that there's a computer running. So just something to think about depending on the type of motherboard you get. And that's the beauty of building your uh, custom PC. Now, something also to note is the price of my custom PC. I could have bought a fully loaded, because you can argue that the Mac Pro is portable. <clears throat> I could have bought the most decked out MacBook Pro laptop fully loaded with every possible option all the way upgraded to the gills and it would still be cheaper buying my custom PC plus a custom or highly configurable, you know, MacBook Pro and it'll still be cheaper than an eight core Mac Pro. So something to think about if you're gonna be doing traveling and you need that portability. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you guys want in on this challenge, <clears throat> I'm gonna leave a spreadsheet down below where you guys can take a look at all of these benchmark scores and kind of keep track. Use hashtag MacProChallenge, and I'll try and keep this spreadsheet up to date so you guys can go in there and kind of compare your computer with our computers. And if you're looking to do something similar, like I said, make sure you use that hashtag MacProChallenge. So the other thing I was able to do is also run a Hackintosh with this build. So if you like Mac operating system, you will have no problems doing that. So that's just something to think about. Also, the Mac Pro is not good for gaming. And that's something also to consider if you want to entertain people at your house, your computer is one of the best entertainments for some of you out there that have an Xbox or PS4, um, especially now with Steam being able to stream now to your television without having to take your computer there. That's something really powerful that, you know, I could be running or playing Battlefield or whatever game that you guys like, you know, COD or, you know, any game and have a lot of fun with that. So. Just little minor things to consider. Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said, if you guys want in on it, make sure you use that Mac Pro challenge. I had enough money left over to buy a Mac Pro trash can. So if you guys wanna watch or see the unboxing of this, make sure you give it a give me a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and I'll do an unboxing on that. By the way, that trash can is expensive, almost as expensive as a Mac Pro. But anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be doing more stuff with PCs and of course Android. Until next time, adios.